There's a new type of malware. This one is stealthier than others. It infects all running processes and it targets Linux. There's a lot to talk about, so let's start by talking about how exactly this malware works. We're gonna talk about the specific goals that this malware was developed to accomplish. And we're gonna talk a little bit about how this malware has already been spotted in the wild, meaning that you might actually have this malware on your Linux system right now, and you wouldn't even know about it. This malware is called Symbiote. It's named after the symbiotic relationship that a parasite has with its host. Similar to that, this malware has a parasitic relationship to the machine that it infects. Uh oh, and, and by the way, there's a link to this article that we're going to be using as a citation. It was a Samsung research article. It's down in the video description, so you can follow along there or do some additional reading. There is a lot of technical information about this malware that you can dig into that we may not necessarily cover in this video, so be sure to check that out if this is something that's interesting to you. Anyway, let's get back at it. So what do I mean that this malware has a symbiotic or parasitic relationship with its host? Let's talk about that. You might be familiar with how typically malware exists as a standalone executable or basically a file that needs to be run or clicked on for it to detonate. And that means that even if it's hidden, you can still kind of find it either in a file system or somewhere on the machine's directory, and you can identify it as a potentially malicious or unfamiliar executable. And that allows you an opportunity to get rid of it. Say, for instance, you find evil.exe in your downloads folder, and you don't remember downloading it. That's a little suspicious. But then another thing is that most malware doesn't necessarily clean up after itself. Most malware just detonates, and it doesn't necessarily do anything to delete any logs that might contain references to itself or anything like that. And again, that gives defenders an opportunity to know that that malware either had previously been on the system or might currently still be on the system, but in either case, something fishy is going on. Symbiote, however, is different. This isn't its own standalone executable. Instead, it's loaded along with the LD preload function and it can then run alongside any running process. Therefore, it can hide itself in those processes. Say, for instance, you were to run psexec and and you were to be looking for active processes on your Linux machine, you would find a list of currently running processes. Well, again, typical malware could be listed either as, again, evil.exe. Maybe if they tried to disguise themselves, it would look as a duplicate process. But in this case, this malware is running alongside a legitimate process. So whenever you look at currently running processes on your Linux machine, you're just gonna see legitimate processes. You're not gonna see Symbio running. But know that it could potentially be running as a result of any of those legitimate jobs that are running. And you can't just restart those jobs because it'll, again, just reload this malware alongside any of those jobs. And this gives that malware latitude to be able to bounce and pivot and migrate to other processes to maintain persistence. In the research article, it has this interesting mind map that can kind of show some of the different evasion techniques that Symbio employs. You'll see that it will remove Symbio from the output. It will inject BPF code to drop traffic on specific ports. It can remove to and from specific ports. And there's a few other techniques here as well, like hide files based on names. Like there's a number of ways that this malware really works within the Linux system to hide itself. One of the interesting things that I saw that this malware will hide itself is it will look for a log file that's being written to. Basically what it does is it creates a new file in the temp folder, and then it will pretty much copy every line that is a log for a port that it's not using or onto the new temp file, except for lines that include the port that it is using. So this new file, won't include any of the logs on its current activity. It will then close once it's finished, delete the old log file, and then use that new log file as the legitimate log. Legitimate. This can make it hard for anybody that's retroactively going through the logs and trying to identify you know, malicious activity because again, the logs that they're looking at can't be trusted. They were made by the malware. So what exactly was the goal of this malware? What does it do? Well, it can serve a couple purposes. One of the purposes is for credential stealing, and then the other purpose is as a command and control server or a backdoor. And the way that it is able to do both is by, again, maintaining persistence, which is by hiding itself. So we've talked about how it hides itself. Let's talk a little bit about how it can steal credentials. Of course, since it can attach itself and run alongside any running process, this can include something like SSH or a process that the user has to authenticate themselves 
themselves to. So it can sit there and wait for the user to type in their credentials and well, then the malware has stolen their credentials. Once captured, it will then hex encode these credentials and then send them in little chunks as DNS A records. Once the attacker is able to authenticate into the system, then it will then look for ways that they can escalate privileges to root. This malware also acts as a command and control server. In effect, this is really giving the attacker the ability to run arbitrary commands as root on this, on this machine, and it will allow the attacker to pivot to other machines. So this is all pretty bad, but it all gets a lot worse whenever we remember that this wasn't caught in a lab where it was developed just as a proof of concept. This was found in the wild, already being used actively to exploit machines. Meaning that while it was already found targeting the finance sector in Brazil, which is where pulled the sample in November of 2021, it is already halfway through 2022, which means that this malware has already had plenty of time to proliferate throughout the internet and be used by other threat groups for other reasons. And the most unfortunate thing for this is that there is no patch for it, at least not yet. And this is all a huge issue. I mean, mind you that Linux is one of the most widely used operating systems internally within corporate networks. And even a lot of people probably watching this channel use Linux either as part of their home lab. Some of you probably even use it as your primary operating system, which I mean, good for you. Drop a comment if that's what you do. And it's for good reason. I mean, Linux is highly flexible. It's free to use. You can do a lot with Linux. It's a good operating system to use. However, because it isn't Windows, meaning Linux isn't used as widely as Windows, it doesn't have as many exploits out for it. That also means it doesn't have as many security patches out for it. So something like this can kind of be low hanging fruit where there's no patch for this for Symbiote. It can proliferate throughout Linux environments. And again, if you're not paying very close attention, you may not even know it. Another concerning thing about this is that attackers may be able to create duplicate types of malware or other versions, meaning that while we have Symbiote right now, we might see other kinds of Symbiote-like malware that kind of follow the same principle of attaching themselves and loading themselves as legitimate running processes and not necessarily as standalone executables like typical malware. None of this is good. Now, this all seems like a lot of doom and gloom, but here's some good news. Starfield's coming out. We also have plenty of time to go back to analog, you know, pen and paper and, and not necessarily have to deal with this. I, for one, am in favor. But also bear in mind that for every offensive innovation, there's a defensive innovation. And for every defensive innovation, there's an offensive innovation. So just because Symbiote exists doesn't mean that there won't be a fix for it at some point. And just because there's that fix for it doesn't mean that there won't be something else to beat that fix in the future. It's kind of just the routine dynamic that happens in cybersecurity. So do stay tuned there will probably be a patch for symbiote at some point at least i hope so until then the best thing that you can really do is make sure that you have great monitoring in place and you're able to identify currently running processes and analyze behavior both on the network and on the host to be able to make sure that you are finding when symbiote is running as soon as possible and that of course takes us to the pyramid of pain which if you haven't seen that video yet Here's a link, you should absolutely check that out. That is an incredibly valuable resource that you can use. Also, be sure to drop a like and comment on this video if this was at all helpful for you and hit the subscribe button. It really helps this channel grow. With all that, I will see you all next time. Bye.